All right, what we're going to talk about here is uh, simulations and understanding randomness. This is chapter 11 in our book, and as we start this next big unit, it only covers three chapters, but as we start this next big unit, randomness plays an absolutely enormous part in all of the chapters, all of the topics, all the lessons. So we really got to understand randomness. So we all know what it means for something to be random. Or do we? Many children's games rely on chance outcomes. For example, rolling dice, spinning spinners, and shuffling cards all select at random. Adult games use randomness as well, from card games to lotteries to bingo. What's the most important aspect of the randomness in these games? Well, the most important aspect is that it must be fair. What is about random selection that makes it seem fair? It's really two things. So what is it about random selection that makes it fair? The first thing that makes it fair is that nobody can guess the outcome before it happens. So you don't know the outcome. Don't know the outcome. If you have any idea of what that outcome can be, or if that outcome is biased in any way, well, it's obviously not random. The second thing that makes it truly random selection is that when we want things to be fair, usually some underlying set of outcomes will be equally likely. So we would like everybody to have an equally likely chance to be selected each person or each object. If it's not equally likely, if there's not some type of um, likeliness that's set, then obviously it's not going to be a random selection. Okay. Now, um, although in many games, some combinations of outcomes are more likely than others, and that's really okay, but it's the idea that what is set to be likely is, is what's set. Okay. We can't have some groups being unfairly um, better chance of being selected or something like that. Randomness is not always what we might think of as at random. Random outcomes have a lot of structure. Now, you would think the opposite, right? It's random. How does random outcomes have structure? But they really do, especially when viewed in the long run. You can't predict how a fair coin will land on a single toss, but you're pretty confident that if you flipped it thousands of times, you'd see about 50% heads. As we will see, randomness is an essential tool of statistics. The statisticians don't think of randomness as an annoying tendency of things to be unpredictable or haphazard. Statisticians use randomness as a tool. In fact, without deliberately applying randomness, we couldn't do most of statistics, and everything we learned would be pointless. Okay? So, the first thing we're going to talk about with randomness is you know, what are we trying to accomplish when we talk about random selection and we move into what we're talking about today with simulations? Well, it all starts with the idea of unlikely or how likely or how unlikely an event is. So when we want to consider how unlikely or likely an event is, we think about could this event happen by pure chance or because of natural variation? So when somebody says something to you like, oh, well, that was lucky, or that was, that was likely, or oh, wow, that was an unlikely, wow, I, I won the lottery, that was unlikely, you have to consider, okay, for it to really be likely or unlikely, could that event have happened by just pure chance? If it could have happened by pure chance, then it probably wasn't that likely. But if the chance of an event occurring by natural variation is low, meaning it, it shouldn't just happen, then we could truly assume an event is unlikely. And that should make complete sense. So once again, if an event, if the chance of an event occurring by just, just pure happenstance, right, is low, then that event would probably be considered unlikely. Okay? So one way of exploring this idea is with simulations. A simulation is a multi-step process that uses random numbers from either a calculator or from a random number list like this one below. So a simulation consists of a sequence of random outcomes that model a situation. I'll say that again. A simulation consists of a sequence of random outcomes that model a situation. In this sequence, the most basic event is called a component. So we need to um, use numbers to represent things happening. Because in a simulation, it's exactly what it sounds like. You're simulating. You're not actually doing it. You're simulating it. So we need numbers to represent the outcomes. So that's the whole idea of using random numbers to represent random outcomes. So again, outcomes, 
things that could happen randomly, we can use numbers to represent that. And we're going to do a couple examples here to see that. So this real quick is just a, what we call a random table of numbers. It's literally a random number, of number, random table of numbers. I know it's organized into groups of five, but you really just kind of ignore that and just look at, hey, I got a bunch of numbers. Another way of getting random numbers is with our calculator. If you hit math and go over to PRB, it stands for probability, go down to number five, it stands for random integer. So if you click on random integer, you have to give it a range. So I could say 0 to 99, because 0 to 99 would be any double-digit number. Um, obviously, 100 is a triple-digit number. So if I hit enter, it's just going to literally give me random double or digit numbers. 0 would be treated as 0, 0. So it's going to just give me, again, random numbers. That's it. Just keep going with random numbers. So your calculator is probably going to give different ones than mine. Now, we want to actually see a simulation with an example. And this example will really help you understand how we use numbers to represent random outcomes. So inside of your favorite cereal box is a figurine of a famous sports athlete. The company that makes the cereal claims that 11% of boxes contain Tiger Woods, 27% contain Serena Williams, and 62% contain Tom Brady. So this is an example of equally likely but not equally likely. I mean the company is stating that these are the percentages so equally likely would be 33, 33, 33 or 33.33 33 for each one. So it's not equally likely here but it's, it's the outcomes are set to be likely in terms of by these different percentages if that makes sense. So a friend claims that he got all three figurines in three straight boxes so he opened up three boxes and in, in the matter of opening up three boxes he was able to get all three figurines and that seems kind of rare maybe but uh, let's run a simulation to see how many boxes it takes to get all three figurines. So when you run a simulation, there's actually a specific seven-step process. So I'm going to list every step. I'm going to do every step here with our problem. So the first step, and I'll repeat it twice, is to identify the component to be repeated. Identify the component to be repeated. In this case, our component is the selection of a box of cereal. Remember, a simulation is a sequence of components. And those components are things that are being simulated. So we're simulating opening a box of cereal. So we're going to use numbers to simulate a box of cereal. So we're identifying the component to be simulated. Okay. The second step is to actually explain exactly how you're going to model the outcome. How are you going to have boxes represent numbers and so forth? Okay. So we have to think that 11% of boxes are Tiger Woods, 27 are Serena, and 62 are Tom Brady. Now this is easy because it's percentages, and percentages are always out of 100. So I need to use double-digit numbers. Okay, I can't use triple digits. I need double digits, and I'll explain a little bit, uh, a little clearly in a second. Double digit numbers are 0, 0 through 99. So there really are 100 double digit numbers out there. 0, 0 through 99. 100 is not a double digit number. It's a triple digit number. So don't say 1 to 100. You got to say 0, 0 to 99. Okay, so I have to look at double digit numbers. Now, of these 100 numbers, 0, 0 to 99, I need 11% of them to be Tiger Woods. Now, I can choose any 11 of them to be Tiger Woods. I really could. I can choose 22, 39, 46, 92, but that kind of gets stupid. I need to have a little bit of an organization to this. So for Tiger Woods, I'm going to use numbers 0, 0 through 10. Now, you might think, wait a minute, wait a minute, it needs to be 11 numbers. Well, there really are 11 numbers there. If you don't believe me, count them on your fingers. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 11 numbers. So this would represent the 11% of numbers that are Tiger Woods. And let's see, Serena Williams would come next. Now, Serena Williams is going to start at 11. Now, a lot of times this can be confusing for some students, and even for me, so you've got to really take our time to understand this. So let's see here. So if I do 11 plus 27, that's 38. But I don't want to go to 38, and you'll see why in a second. I actually want to go one less than that, and that's 37. Because if you count on your fingers 11 to 37, that's 27 values, 20, representing 27% of our dig double digit numbers. Again, another way of seeing that is if I do 37 minus 11, I get 26. But 11 is included, so I actually need to do 37 minus 10, so that way I include the 11. So if I do 37 minus 10, 
I, I get that um, 27 numbers, right? Or another way of doing it is to do start with where you ended. So Tiger Woods ended at 10. So if I do 10 plus 27, I'll get that 37 to end for Serena Williams. And then finally, Tom Brady. Tom Brady is fairly easy. He's going to start at 38 and go to 99. That's going to represent 62% or 62% of the double-digit numbers. So again, 99 minus 39 is 60, okay? Um, but remember, I'm really including those other numbers. Oh, I messed that up. Sorry, not 37. It should be 38. Thank you. Sorry. 38. That's kind of messy there, but you see it. So 38, 37, next 38. So if I do 37, that's where I stop for Serena, plus 62, I do end at 99 for Tom Brady. So what's happening here is I'm going to explain that um, each number is going to represent a figurine. Numbers 00, 00 through 10 would represent Tiger Woods, 11 through 37 represents Serena Williams, and 38 through 99 would represent Tom Brady. So I'm just simulating. I'm letting numbers represent the boxes, and inside of each box needs to be one of these three figurines. Now, I also have to mention, what do I do with numbers outside of this range? Well, the good news is, is I'm using every number 00, 00 through 99. So I don't have to worry about ignoring any numbers. And what about repeats? Well, um, for example, what if the number 22 comes up three times? Well, um, since I'm basing on percentages, that would be okay. So I don't have to ignore repeats. So I'm going to write that down. Don't ignore repeats. Sometimes you do have to ignore repeats, for example, if it actually represents a person that you don't want picked again. So for example, if I'm picking students at random and person 22 gets selected, I can't pick them again. But since I'm based this really on percentages and every number represents a new box, it would be okay if I have repeats. Okay, so step two is really just explaining how you're going to actually number and represent your components. So how the components are going to be represented by numbers. Okay, step three is explain how you will simulate a trial. Now I'm going to move up to some blank space here. So step three is explaining exactly how one trial is going to be done. So I will look at double digit numbers. and record who I get, meaning Tiger Woods, Serena Williams, or Tom Brady, and who I get. And then the other important thing here, it's really important in number three, that you understand when to end. Once I get all three figurines, trial will end. Okay, so that's the goal. Remember, the, you have to read the question to understand what we're trying to accomplish here. We're trying to figure out how many boxes do I have to actually get to get all three figurines. So once I have all three figurines, a trial will end. Step four is um, stating the response variable. The response variable, okay, so let me write that down. So it's the response variable. So the response variable is what you're measuring at the end. What am I measuring at the end? What am I looking for when a trial is over? So when a trial is over, I will count how many boxes I opened. I'm going to put opened in quotes because I'm not really doing it. I'm simulating it, right? Okay. Now, so um, one is just saying basically what we're doing here, identifying the component. The numbers are going to represent the box of serial. Two is explaining that number system. Three is, is uh, saying exactly what you're going to do. I'm going to look at double-digit numbers and record who I get. Once I get all three figurines, the trial will end. Four is identifying the response variable, and that is the number of boxes that it's going to take um, once I am done with a trial. So once I'm done with the trial, I'm going to count how many boxes I opened to get all three figurines. Now, step five is I'm actually going to run trials. How many trials to run? Well, I mean, you really should run a ton of them. The more you run, the more accurate you're going to be. So let's run several trials here, okay? And we're going to make our notes here. Here's trial one. We're going to do trial two, trial three, trial four, trial five, trial six. Okay, I, I probably should do more than six, but I'm going to just do six so you get an idea of what's going on here. Okay, so here I go. I'm just looking at numbers. I'm ignoring these gaps. That's just here there for kind of keep some kind of organization to it. So first number is 13. 13 is 
a Serena Williams. So that is Serena Williams. I'll put a little S there for Serena Williams. Next number is 20. That is also a Serena Williams. Next number is 56. Just ignore that gap there. 56. 56 is Tom Brady. Put a little T there for Tom. Um, and let's see here. Our next number is 92. 92 is another Tom Brady. Now, and why is my trial continuing? Because I haven't got all three figurines yet. Let's see here. 37. 37 is going to be a Serena Williams. 21 is another Serena Williams. 82 is another Tom Brady, and 02, okay, look at this, 02 is a Tiger Woods, so I'll put a W there for Tiger Woods, so it is official, I have gotten all three figurines, and it took me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 boxes, so my response variable for trial 1 is it took 8 boxes to get all three figurines, alright, now it's time for the next trial, and I'm going to pick up right where I left off. So next trial starts with 95, that's a Tom Brady. 21, that's a Serena Williams. 66, that's a Tom Brady. 35, that's a Serena Williams. 58, that's a Tom Brady. 86, that's a Tom Brady. 79, that's a Tom Brady. 76, Tom Brady. 50, Tom Brady. Wow, I've really got a lot of these Tom Brady's here. 82, Tom Brady. 98, Tom Brady, 36, Serena Williams, uh, 86, Tom Brady, and you can continue, 55, another Tom Brady, 12, oh, so close, that is a Serena Williams, 42, Tom Brady, 12, Serena Williams, 21, Serena Williams, 59, Tom Brady, and finally, seven, I finally got a Tiger Woods. So that took me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, six, wait, I mean, I lost track. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I lost track again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 20. It took me 20 boxes that time to get all of my um, three figurines. Okay, so let's do one more. I think you're getting the point, I hope. 39, Tom Brady. 36, Serena Williams. Uh, 81, Tom Brady. 20, Serena Williams. Oh, four, Tiger Woods. Okay, this trial took me one, two, three, four, five boxes. Okay, so anyway... Step five is just running several trials, doing it over and over again. But you need to know, what does every number represent? And that's what we did back in step two, identified that. And when do I end a trial? That was step three, really understanding when do I end a trial in step four again? What, what's the response for it? What do I measure when I'm ending a trial? Okay? And for me, that was when I have all three figurines. So I'm not going to continue on, but for step six now, step six is to analyze the response. And basically, this is step six right here. Step six is right here. It's just kind of keeping track of what's happening. So as you're ending your trials, keeping your notes basically, right? And then finally, step seven, I'll do down here. Step seven is stating your conclusion. So you would always start off with according to my simulation, because you know what? If somebody else did a simulation and they started down here on this row right here and they went this way, or somebody might go down rows, they might have different results. That's why you have to start off by saying, according to my simulation, and then it will take... And you could get an average of these, so you could do an average of 8, 20, and 5, 8 plus 20, but now only three trials probably isn't very good, but that would be an average of 11. It will take, on average, 11 boxes to get all three figurines. Figurines, sorry, I can't spell. Now, it's really important that you understand what's happening here. Okay, I could say 11 boxes, I could say between 5 and 20, you know, there's a whole bunch of different things you could say, there. it's all based on what the question is asking, so make sure you read the question. So now let's go back to what my friend said, my friend said he got all three, 
Do I believe them? Well, I only did three trials, so maybe this isn't really enough to give a good judgment. But I'm starting to really not believe them because I think, man, that would be really rare. That would be pretty unlikely because, for example, 62% of them have Tom Brady. You should get a lot of Tom Brady's like we saw in our second trial. But so here's what's either happening. Either my friend's lying, and maybe my friend says, no, look, I have the three boxes right here in front of me. I swear it happened. So what do I do then? What do I do if my friend actually showed me that something that I'm showing with a simulation is very unlikely, but it happened? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the company and say, you know what? I'm not so sure your percentages are right. Because if something unlikely happened, like my friend getting all three figurines in three straight boxes, then something's got to be wrong. We just don't believe in miracles in the world of statistics. It'd be nice to think, oh, it was a miracle, oh my, but it's not. We don't believe in miracles. We have to believe that something went wrong. So either my friend's lying, but hey, he showed me he wasn't lying. Then I got to go with the truth, and that is that the company's claims must be wrong. But anyway, a simulation, as I'm showing here, is a nice way to explore all of this. Okay, it's a really nice way to kind of go through and explore all of this. So um, that's pretty cool, easy example. Hopefully everybody understood that. And I'm going to show you one more. I'm going to go through really, really quickly. I'm not going to explain it all, write it all out. I'm just kind of talk a lot here. So I had a company, 22 people are applying for three open positions. 12 men and 10 women apply. When the interviews are done, all three jobs are filled by women. The men believe that there's some discrimination going on. Run a, run a simulation to see. So I want to run a simulation to simulate getting three people um, chosen at random, right? Let's see about randomness, remember? Because the idea is to see if something's unlikely or likely, we have to determine could it happen by pure chance. So we have to, there are no percentages we're given here, so we have to come up with some numbers here. So we could use, um, let's see, so we got 12 men. So we could use 1 through 12 to represent men, and 13 through let's see here, 22 to represent women. So that would be my 22 people, 1 through 22, 1 through 12 are the men, and 13 through 22 are the women. Okay, now you could do zero if you wanted to. If you did zero, I'm going to put in here if, right, if you did use zero, you'd use zero through 11 for men and 12 through 21 for women because remember that zero counts. So that would be still 22 people. Now, what do we do with the numbers like 23, 24, 25, 26? So we would ignore, we'd have to say this, ignore numbers. This would all be in step two, explaining what's going on here. Ignore numbers not in my range. So I would ignore numbers not in my range. Now here, I would have to ignore repeats. So actually people are being chosen here. This isn't based on percentages. People are being chosen. So I would have to ignore repeats. Okay. And how do I know when the trial ends? Once three um, positions have been filled. So three people hired. That's when it's going to end. And I'm going to record how many are women. Because remember, the guys are claiming there's discrimination going on here. So I'm going to show you a calculator for this actually. So once again, you're going to go math, go over to PRB, and I'm going to tell the calculator, and this is why the calculator could be very helpful because you could tell it a range so you don't have to worry about it. I'm going to tell it go 1 through 22. Okay? So Boom, boom, boom. Oh, wait a minute. 20, I'm so happy this happened. 22 got repeated, so I have to ignore repeats and do another one. So person 21, person 1, and person 3 were recorded. So in trial 1, I had a woman, a man, and a man. So in trial 1, in trial 1, this would be my step 6, showing my results, I had a woman, a man, and a man. So that would be one woman. So under trial one, only one woman was hired. Is that is one trial enough to convince the men that three women could never happen? Well, probably not. So we need to do many, many trials and figure out and figure out how many of those trials were all women. So that's the nice thing about the calculus. You could quickly do these trials. So one, two, three, 16, 22, 14. Let's see. That's going to be woman, woman, woman. Okay, so right there we had three women. So in our second trial, we came up with what men thought was unlikely, and we came up with three women. So maybe it really isn't that unlikely to come up with three women. So basically, we would continue doing many, many, many trials, and then we would determine how many, what percentage, so we wouldn't find an average here, we'd find what percentage of those trials had all three women. And if it was kind of likely, like, hey, all three women happened quite a few times, then we would say that there's no discrimination 
conversation going on here. Heck, by pure chance, you could have a lot of women selected, okay? So that's another quick, easy example. Hopefully, you understand. So what you're going to do, focus on in class, is practicing a lot of these types of simulations. So hopefully, that makes sense. Hopefully, it helps you out a little bit there. And remember, there are seven specific, seven specific steps, so don't fit any of them.